Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Godzilla Minus One. This movie is directed by Takashi Yamazaki, and to avoid butchering the names of the actors in this movie, I'm just going to display them right here. Now, the plot of this movie is the dropping of the atomic bomb not only devastated and destroyed Japan, but it also created a much bigger monster in the form of Godzilla. Now, going to this movie, I saw no trailers. I heard nothing about it, just the title, Godzilla Minus One, so I thought it might be a prequel of sorts. And I enjoyed the last couple of American Godzilla movies, but I noticed that American Godzilla movies kind of have this uh, trope, if you will, of focusing a lot more on these uninteresting human characters and then having Godzilla as like a big bad threat, almost like a... A, a big deal like a prize fight type character where they'll show him a couple times and when they do he'll mean business and it'll be awesome but the story will meander and focus on the humans in the meantime which I didn't really care for and I didn't happen to see Shin Godzilla but all the older Japanese Godzilla movies I'd seen I enjoyed so I was like alright Godzilla's back in the right hands this time with Toho so we'll see what happens and let me just say this is one of, if not the, best Godzilla movie I've seen. Here's why. So the plot of this movie follows a young kamikaze pilot in Japan who takes his plane to this small island in need of repairs. While he's on that island, there's a disturbance. There's some violence. There's a tragedy that occurs. And so, ever since that moment, we followed this singular character with his experiences and all the things he's had to go through. And that's one thing that made this movie so gripping and powerful, is you're seeing everything through his eyes. So when he gets back home and he sees that Japan has just been obliterated by the atomic bomb, that's also something this character has to deal with. And then characters come into his lives, to fill gaps of characters that have left his lives. He also has to deal with that. They deal as a country, as a worn, torn, and defeated Japan as a whole. So you have that aspect of the movie as well, as the country is mourning loss of the war, loss of people that are no longer with them. He also has to deal with that. And it sounds like a lot of emotion and pressure to bear as the audience and main character well, that's because it is, and that's one thing that's really well done about this story is all this guilt, all this anger, all this despair, all the things that he's feeling, you know, comes to a boiling point, and that's what makes the moments in this movie so emotional and intense and enjoyable is because you're having to feel all of this, and then you have Godzilla, <laughs> who's just destroying whatever he wants when he wants so it's a lot to take in this movie is an experience but we're better for it because it's an incredible one role in the story and then you have um, this crew that he works with on a boat you have the captain you have this younger man you have a scientist and all their characters are unique as well they have different different drives different personalities it's one of those really well done storytelling devices where the characters have distinct voices and distinct personalities and they match the way they look physically, which I thought was a, a really nice little touch. Now Godzilla, the man, or should I say the creature himself, is terrifying in this movie. He's scary, not only in the way he looks, but just the way he acts. He's not a good guy that's going to team up with another monster in this movie. He's not an anti-hero. He's the straight up villain who's going to destroy what he wants, when he wants, because he doesn't give a you-know-what. He's just going to trample through buildings and step on people like it's, you know, it's another day in the office, because he just doesn't care. And it makes the destruction, the terror, you know, the fear that much stronger, because he's just like, oh my gosh, he's coming, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. And it's, it's incredible. So this movie had a really strong, you know, human element to it, to the story. And it was really emotional because you had this character that was just beaten down, beaten down, beaten down by life and emotion and all this stuff you had to deal with. So when the nice moments come, when the sweet moments come, it's 
really emotional and really powerful. The music also in this movie is really well done, aside from the classic Godzilla music that's just more intense this time around because this version of Godzilla is, is bigger and more powerful and just a lot scarier. There's other songs in this movie as well. There's a song where these, you know, humans are, are rallying to try to defeat Godzilla. And so there's this, you know, this nice little whimsical, almost triumphant tune they play where, you know, the main character is flying his plane and it plays like this music where <clears throat> it's very hopeful, very uplifting. And the music is really well done. Everything in this movie looked really great. And it's hard to believe this film was only made for $15 million. That's insane. Godzilla looked incredible. When he did his nuclear blast, wow. <laughs> like when his, oh man, when his, um, I forget what they're called, uh, not spikes, but the things on his back when they start glowing and you know it's coming, watch out. So the human story was really strong, really powerful, really emotional, but Godzilla looked fearsome and dangerous and so intense. And when the two finally clash in the third act, you know, it is really one of those intense white knuckle, you know, oh my gosh, you can't wait to see what happens. Kind of sit up straight type final acts in the movie. And it was just really well done, really emotional. And it really just goes to show you the difference in storytelling between American films and foreign films. And so I think Yamazaki did a really good job with this movie. I hope we get another one. My only gripe with this movie, only gripe, is that we see Godzilla in a different form in this movie. And then after he, you know, the atomic bomb is dropped and he kind of changes... It's only a brief scene in this movie, and I kind of wish we got more of it. But I get it. They wanted to be very brief. They wanted to add suspense for when this new Godzilla emerges and comes about that it's more like a mystery. More like, whoa, what's attacking these ships? What's going on? And then when they finally show him, you're like, oh, that's what the threat is. Okay. So this movie was amazing. I've seen it more than once, and the music is great. The visuals are awesome. The human story which I thought was going to be the weakest part of the movie, turned out to be the strongest part of the movie. So this movie was incredible. And I think it was very, very well done. If you're a Godzilla fan, I recommend this movie. Because of that, I'm going to give Godzilla minus one an A. So until next time, guys, see ya.